Using NeoPixels to build a signaling system as I did in video number 13 has many advantages when it comes to wiring and configuration. But what do you do if you already have a lot of signals with standard LEDs on the layout? Can they be integrated in the pixel chain? Yes they can and in this video I show you how to do it. Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I am Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use IoT components to control a model railroad layout. Let's get started! In video number 13 I built my searchlight signals using small PCBs with a 5050 chip mounted on it. It was very easy to solder a 2mm breast tube to it as a mast and a 3D printed lens shield made it look quite acceptable although too large for N scale but almost perfect for HO. A little later in video number 15 I converted a level crossing signal retrofitting it with 2mm NeoPixel LEDs. Those LEDs are available now in 2, 3 and 5mm sizes which gives good options for HO scale and larger signals but installing them is a real pain at least if your fine motoric skills are not significantly better than mine. Honestly, I did not enjoy the conversion I started in that video and never finished the work that I began on the main line signal. But luckily, I found a better option to make conventional LED signals work in a NeoPixel chain. A viewer pointed out some PCBs with WS2811 chips on it, provided by a company in Sweden. They offer three versions with one, two or four chips and each of the chips can drive three LEDs. I like this board very much, except for the price tag. So I looked around and found a PCB on AliExpress that can drive three LEDs but only costs about 5% of the Swedish one chip version and even includes shipping. It is using the exact same chip, so this brings down cost to about 12 US cents per three LEDs converted. I also bought some common anode RGB LEDs which perfectly fit those boards and make it very easy to make some simple LEDs, for example to indicate the position of a turnout. First, I soldered the three wire connectors to the in and out connections of the PCB. The red wire is 5 volts, the white is ground and the green wire in the middle is for the data. One side is labeled I for data in, the other is O for data out. Make sure you use the right connector on the right side. Standard is the female connector carries the in signal, while the male connector goes to the next NeoPixel. That's how LED strips normally are wired. I also put a piece of heat shrink tube around the wires to reduce mechanical stress on the soldering joints. On the other end, the WS2811 PCB has four soldering pads for the LEDs, labeled R, G, V and plus. That means it is designed for common anode signals. Those are the ones that need to have the common wire connected to plus. Normally, the common is the wire that has the resistor connected to it. When using this PCB, however, the resistor is not needed because the chipset has a current limiting output that sets the current for each LED to about 20 mA. The R, G and B outputs are connected to the individual LEDs of the signal. I soldered first the green LED to G, the red LED to R and the orange LED to B. As it turned out, I had to switch red and green. This is a problem you might run into as well. Not all NeoPixels are wired the same way. The ones I used for my signaling system are wired G or B and the PCBs used to convert the signal are RGB. We will see that a little later when we run the test program. It is not really a problem as we can easily adjust for it in the setup of the software, it is just a little annoying. Finally, I glued the PCB to the mast of the signal using hot glue. Now it is very easy to drill a hole in the layout, insert the signal from the top and wire it into the signal chain. In total I converted two signals and made two more light pixels using the RGB LEDs. Then I placed all four modules on my test layout to be integrated in the already existing chain of 12 signals. They will be inserted after the 9th signal, so the four PCBs will be signals 10, 11, 12 and 13 in my signaling system. 
After installation of the hardware, it was time to start the configuration web page and integrate the new signals into the signal chain. After loading the web page, I added four new signals after signal 9. All these signals are single LED signals, as they only have one WS2811 chip each. I decided to make them using switch addresses and four aspects in dynamic mode, so I assigned switch addresses 125 and 126 to the first signal. As you remember, dynamic mode means the signal shows the aspect requested by the last command received to one of the assigned addresses. The transition mode is set to soft, which causes the signal to ramp down and up LEDs when changing the aspect. Then I programmed the aspects. Aspect 0 should light the red LED, so I selected red. For aspects 1 and 2, I selected yellow, which of course was a mistake. Yellow, as the color on the NeoPixel is defined, makes use of the green and red LED to mix yellow. However, since this signal has individual LEDs, all yellow does is bringing up the red and the green LED at the same time. The yellow LED in reality is connected to the blue output, so in order to make the yellow LED come up, I need to select blue as the color. I did that later after figuring out my error. For the RGB LEDs, of course, this is different, as they will generate yellow using green and red. But then, they also have a blue LED on board, so they can generate the entire color range. After doing the initial programming, I saved the data to the signaling system and had it rebooted. When the web page came up again, the signal chain correctly showed 16 LEDs instead of the 12 that were defined before. So, next I selected the test mode and started the test program, which blinks all LEDs simultaneously, going from red to green to blue to dark. In test mode it becomes immediately visible if not all LEDs are using the same color output assignment. As you see, the RGB LEDs have switched green and red outputs compared to all other signals. Just something to think about when doing the configuration. And we can also see that obviously the commercial signals show yellow when all other LEDs show blue. As mentioned, that is because the yellow LED is connected to the blue output of the signal driver. So, after confirming that signal hardware is working properly, I made the adjustments in the signal configuration and with that, my new signals were working.
let's summarize what we learned during this simple exercise. Commercial LED signals can be converted to the WS2812 protocol using driver PCBs that can drive three LEDs. No modification of the signal itself is required. Each connected LED can be individually controlled using 256 brightness levels. Configuration of the signaling system is the same as for regular NeoPixels. Place them in the right spot, configure the aspects, connect them to the daisy chain and that's it. And same is true when you have to make changes later on. You can move the signals around in the web browser as you change the sequence in the daisy chain. And while I was playing with the system, I had some more ideas about improvements of the software of the signaling system. How about this? Instead of just using it as signaling system, I could make a quite universal lighting system that could have LEDs illuminated based on signal commands, switch commands, block detector input or push button input. And besides displaying just signal aspects, I could add light effect generators like strobe lights, flickering, police lights or multi led moving lights, etc. Let me know what you think about this idea in the comment section below. As always, I hope the information in this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If so, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support as well as any feedback in the comment section below. Also, check out the additional information provided in the description section. If you don't want to miss any future IOTT videos, click the bell icon and you will get a notification when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching and see you next time!